In this video, we solve problem number four from written homework number seven during the spring um, 2021 semester in elementary differential equations at Tulsa Community College. So we're asked to use oops, the Laplace transformation method to solve the IVP. We have a differential equation and two initial conditions for a second order differential equation. Now I want you to notice that the differential equation has polynomial coefficients. And another assumption that we're making is that we're assuming that y um, is of exponential order. And what that means for us is that the Laplace transform of y, which is y of s, that must go to 0 as s goes to infinity. Um, so that will be an assumption that we make anytime we're dealing with a differential equation where the polynomial or the, the differential equation has polynomial coefficients and we're solving an IVP with the Laplace transformation method. Okay, so I've got a T in front of that Y prime, which makes this that type of problem where we need this extra assumption. And we'll start this the same way we start every other problem. We let the Laplace transform of Y, Y of T be Y of S and we'll take the Laplace transform of both sides of the differential equation. We always want to introduce that notation so that anyone who reads our work knows exactly what Y of S represents. So I have Laplace transform of Y double prime plus the Laplace transform of T times Y prime minus the Laplace transform of Y equals the Laplace transform of one. Okay, so in order to take the Laplace transform of this piece, we need to remember the um, rule for the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of a function. Now it turns out that we'll always have n plus one terms over here for the nth derivative, and our first term starts with a factor of s to the n. And the next one is a negative s to the n minus one. And the next one after that is a negative s to the n minus two and so on. And the powers of s decrease until at the very end we have an s to the zero, which is just a one. So we don't typically write it. Now each of these powers of s is multiplied by a function. s to the n is multiplied by f of s. That's the Laplace transform of little f of t. Now, all of these other guys are multiplied, not by a function, but a function evaluated at x equals zero. It's gonna be little f evaluated at zero, and then the order of the derivative increases. So we'll have little f prime evaluated at zero. The second one, or the next one after that would be little f double prime. And the last one will be the n minus one, the derivative of f evaluated at zero. So if that's a fifth derivative, that would be the fourth derivative at zero and so on. And again, we always have n plus one terms over here. So if this is the second derivative, n is equal to two. So that means I'll have two plus one or three terms when I take the Laplace transform of that piece. So this line is equivalent to this next line. And we start with s to the nth power or s squared. And then we um, keep subtracting and we let the power of s decrease. So we'll have s squared, s to the first and s to the zero. And then we'll take the first guy and we'll multiply by the Laplace transform of little y, which is big Y. And then we evaluate uh, y, little y at zero here and we have uh, little y prime at zero. And those are just numbers from our initial condition. So that is our Laplace transform of y double prime. Now this piece requires more, um, and it's a little bit more involved as well. So with that one, we have to use this rule. Um, the derivatives of Laplace transform theorem tells us that if we have the nth power of t times f of t, that turns out to be negative one to the n times the nth derivative with respect to s of f of s, which I like to write as the Laplace transform of f of t. Because when I write it this way, it reminds me what I'm supposed to do. It says, take the Laplace transform of f, then take its nth derivative with respect to s, and then multiply by negative one to the n. That's exactly what we'll do here. We've got a t to the first, so n is equal to one, just matching that pattern. That's a t to the n, and that's a t to the n, so n must be one. And our f of t is y prime. So 
according to this, we'll have a negative one to the first times the first derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of this function, which is y prime. So we'll compute the Laplace transform of the function, and then we'll take its derivative with respect to s, and that will go there. And then we will, oops, that should be a, oh, that negative one comes from that. So that's right. So it's, yes, but it's plus negative one to the first. Okay. And then we're subtracting the Laplace transform of y, which is y of s, and that equals the Laplace transform of one, which we all know to be one over s. So we'll substitute. Um, we know what y of zero is and what y prime of zero is. Y of zero is negative one and y prime of zero is three. So this will become this. We'll have s squared times y of s. Negative s times negative one is positive s minus three. And then we're subtracting the derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of y prime. So that's where we're applying this rule again, where n is equal to one. So if n is one, we're gonna have two terms. We always have one more term than we have order to that derivative. And this piece, this whole thing, is s to the first times y of s minus s to the zero, which is one times little y at zero. And little y at zero um, was negative one. But it's a constant, and we're gonna take the derivative of that with respect to s. And then don't forget to subtract your y of s and that set that equal to the one over s on the right hand side. Okay, let's keep going. Now I've got the derivative of a product here, so I'll have to use the product rule. So according to the product rule, we'll have derivative of the first with respect to s, which is one times the second undifferentiated plus the derivative of the second with respect to s, which is gonna be y prime of s, times the first undifferentiated. Don't forget to distribute that negative one there. So we'll have s squared times y of s plus s minus three. And if we distribute this negative one, we'll have a negative y of s minus s times y prime of s minus another y of s equals one over s. Okay, now this is a first order differential equation in y of s. And if we simplify, we'll see that it's a first order linear differential equation in y of s that we can solve with an integrating factor. So let's write that, write this expression in that way. So in order to do that, I want my y prime term first. So I have a negative s times y prime of s there, taking care of that. And then I want my y of s terms. I've got an s squared times y of s minus one y of s minus another one y of s. So that'll be s squared minus two all multiplied by y of s. And that equals the one over s on the other side. You wanna subtract s from both sides and add three to both sides to get this guy over there and that guy over there. And now all of those are taken care of. Okay, now, I wanna solve this first order linear equation, I need a coefficient of one here. I need to write it in standard form. So I will divide the entire equation by negative s. And it's the same as multiplying by negative one over s. So I'll do that there when I have the fraction. Let's see what we get. We've got y prime of s. And then this piece can be simplified in this way. We've got two over s. I'll write the positive term first, minus s squared divided by negative s is gonna be um, an s. And then we'll have a negative one over s squared here. Negative s divided by negative s is just a one. And then we have minus three over s. Okay, so now our differential equation is in standard form. So this is a little different from the other problems that we use the Laplace transform to solve. When you have to use this um, derivatives of transforms theorem, instead of reducing the differential equation to an algebra problem involving y of s, it turns it into a first order differential equation involving y of s. Um, so I consider all of this simplification where I'm writing the differential equation in the correct form. And now from here, we will solve 
the first order ODE using an integrating factor. So we, in order to do that, we identify P and we compute its antiderivative. E to that power is going to be our integrating factor. So the integral of P of S with respect to S is the integral of this guy. So this first piece would be two times the natural log of the absolute value of S. And here I'll use the power rule. So I'll bring my negative down, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus a constant of integration. We only need one integrating factor. So we'll choose C equals zero. And our integrating factor will be E to that power. Now we can use this rule from algebra. If you've got x to some power times x to a different power, you add the exponents. It's the same with, with exponential functions as well. If the variables are in the exponent versus the base, it doesn't matter. If the base is the same, we add the exponents. Well, that can be used in reverse as well. So if I'm subtracting these two, I can rewrite this as a product of e to this power times e to that power. e to the negative one half s squared. There we go. Okay. And now this can be simplified further because if you've got a constant in front of natural log of a, you can bring that constant inside. That's the same as natural log of a raised to the n. So I can bring this over here and that's going to make that an e to the natural log of s squared as long as s is not zero. And because our logarithmic functions and our exponential functions undo each other when they have the same base, we're just gonna get an S squared there. So we'll have S squared times this guy and we should state our restriction. That's only true if S is non-zero. And I guess we already knew that S was non-zero because of all these S's over here. Okay, let's keep that there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this differential equation in standard form and we'll multiply by our integrating factor. We'll call that DE star times the integrating factor. So we've got Y prime plus two over S minus S times Y equals this negative one over s squared plus one minus three over s. Now every piece here gets multiplied by s times e to the negative one half s squared. It's s squared times e to the negative one half s squared. There we go. And we should simplify. So we've got S squared times this. And if I distribute this here, this S will reduce with one of those S's. So we'll have two S times our exponential. And this S squared times that negative S is gonna give me a negative S cubed times the exponential. That equals this over here. And if we distribute the s squared times this here, we have a negative one over s squared here with this s squared. So the s squareds will reduce and we'll end up with a negative e to the negative one half s squared power plus s squared times e to the negative one half s squared. And then these guys will reduce, the s will reduce with one of those s's. So we'll have a minus three times s times e to the negative one half s squared there. Okay, so that right hand side's got a lot going on and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But before we do that, let's make sure we did this right. If we've done everything correctly, after multiplying by the integrating factor, the left hand side should be the derivative of y times your integrating factor. And over here, I think I might, I might write this this way. I have negative e to the negative one half s squared plus s squared minus 3s times e to the negative 1 half s squared times ds. 
Now this piece I can't take the antiderivative of, um, but I'm hoping that because of what I can do with this piece, I'll be able to evaluate, uh, or I'll have some cancellations where I'll, I'll be able to get rid of that. But let's let's make sure that we're on the right track first. I don't know what is on my paper. Um, if I want to check and make sure that this is actually equal to what it's supposed to be equal to, I'll call that my first function and I'll call that my second function and I'll use the product rule. So the product rule says the derivative of this product should be derivative of the first times the second, which is right there, plus the derivative of the second, which should be that times the first. So in order to check, I just need to find the derivative of this and see if I get that. Well, let's check. Computing that derivative requires the product rule. I'll call this my first function and this my second function. According to the product rule, we get derivative of the first times the second undifferentiated plus the derivative of the second. Derivative of e to some power is e to that power times the derivative of the inside so we'd have a negative one half times a two times an s to the first, because it's s to the one less power, but we don't usually write that first power. So this is e to that power times the derivative of the inside, the one half and the two reduced. So you just end up with a negative s for the derivative of that piece. So that's derivative of the second. Don't forget to multiply by that first function undifferentiated. So we've got two s times the exponential minus s cubed times the exponential. Yep, and that's exactly what we have right there. Great. Okay, so that tells us, oops, I, I put this integral over there way too soon. I made a mistake. The derivative of this is this. So in order to get rid of the derivative, we will do what I tried to do earlier. We'll take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to s. And on the left, we'll just end up with y times our integrating factor. And on the right, we have this, this integral, which looks tough, but it turns out that it's, it's okay. It looks impossible, you might think because of that e to the negative one half s squared. If you're familiar with the error function or the complementary error function, you might think, I don't know an antiderivative for that. Does, isn't it true that there isn't one? Um, it is true, <laughs> but um, turns out that we're gonna be able to get rid of that um, by evaluating this expression. Now, I wanna use integration by parts for this, but in order to use integration by parts for this piece, I need to write this in a way so that I can take the antiderivative of dv and I can take the derivative of u because um, we need to compute du and v. Um, and I, so I can't let this be my dv because I don't know it's antiderivative. But if it, if it was multiplied by an s, if I had an s times this exponential, which is a constant times s squared in the exponent, that would work. I could do a u sub for that antiderivative. So what I'll do is I'll factor this out. I'm, I'm sort of leaving this one alone for right now. And then over here, I'm factoring out an S. So I'll be left with an S minus three times this. And this will be my U and everything else will be DV. And then I'll just say, okay, well, if that's the case, um, what does this integral um, simplify to? So I'll have uh, u here, I'll need to compute du, that's derivative, times ds, and dv can be evaluated with a u substitution or a w substitution if you want to, to get v. Okay, let's think about it. If I were to just take the derivative of e to the negative one half s squared, I'd get e to the negative one half s squared times the derivative of the inside, which is a negative one times s, and I've got a positive one times s. So I think negative e to the uh, negative one half s squared will work there. If you take the derivative of this guy, you'll get that guy. Of course, you could do a u substitution or a w substitution where w equals this and, and anti-differentiate this whole thing and you'll get that. 
And then we, we always ignore the plus C when we do the antiderivatives for um, integration by parts. So that's there. And then du is the derivative of this, which is one times ds. So we're here now. Again, if you're not sure how to get that antiderivative, you could write it out. V is the antiderivative of S times this. W equals negative one half S squared. DW is the derivative of that, which is negative S DS. And so negative one DW equals S DS. So this is negative e to the w dw. I guess I just did it. <laughs> so we have negative e to the w plus a constant and w is the negative one half s squared. And then we don't need the constant of integration for integration by parts. Okay, so that's how you would do that if you wanted to, or you could just sort of reverse engineer it by doing that u substitution in your head if you wanted. Okay, so the result of the integral of u dv according to integration by parts is u times v minus the integral of v du. And remember that came from the product rule way back in the day when we learned it in calculus two. So we'll have u times v, which is negative one times s minus three times e to the negative one half s squared minus the integral of v times du. So we're subtracting a negative. So that means we're adding the integral of this guy. Check it out. I couldn't evaluate this integral, but I can't evaluate that integral either. And it's totally fine because they're opposites of each other and they're gone. So we just end up with this. And of course, we're going to need a constant of integration over here. That c is different from that c, but you get the idea. So y times the integrating factor is equal to this. So that means y is equal to this guy. Divided by the integrating factor. Now you can divide this expression by the integrating factor and this one by the integrating factor. And you'll see the exponentials reduce. Now I've got an s squared in the denominator so I can split this up. So it'll be negative s over s squared minus a negative three is gonna be plus three over s squared. And then this negative exponential can come up to the numerator. So that's c times that exponential over s squared. And that's our y of s. Now we're assuming that y of t is of exponential order. So that means as s goes to infinity, y of s is supposed to approach zero. Now, after simplification, we see that this is a one over s. So this approach is zero and this approach is zero. Three over something very large, something very small. But here we have an infinity over infinity in determinate form. And we know that exponential functions with positive exponents like this, those are gonna grow much faster than polynomial functions. So this is gonna go to infinity if c is not zero. In order for this to go to zero and it has to go to zero, c must be zero. So we will um, say that C must be zero since Y of S goes to zero as S goes to infinity. And, or you can say C must be zero since Y of T is of exponential order, which implies that. So if that's true, then this is gone and Y of S is just this, and that's very easy to take the, um, inverse transform of. So y of t is the inverse transform of negative one over s plus three over s squared. This piece is gonna give me a negative one and I have a three there and the, in the inverse transform of one over s squared is t to the first. And if you don't remember, that's this guy because if this is uh, s squared, then n plus one is equal to two. So that means n equals one. So I need a one in the numerator. So I factor out the three and I have a one factorial over s squared, which gives me a t to the first. So that's my y of t. Now, if you're not sure, you could always check and make sure this actually works. So let's check in the original differential equation. 
the original differential equation was y double prime plus t times y prime minus y equals one. And we had two initial conditions. Y of zero is equal to negative one and y prime of zero is equal to three. Well, those are pretty easy to check because when I plug in t equals zero here, um, I get y of zero equals negative one. So that's satisfied. And if I take the derivative of this, I just get three. And then if I evaluate three, the, the function y equals three at t equals zero, I still get three. Um, it's a constant function. So both of these are satisfied. The only thing that we really need to check is the differential equation. That's easy enough to do. If we have y equals three t minus one, y prime is three, y double prime is zero. So if we substitute into the left-hand side of the differential equation, we have zero plus t times y prime minus y. y prime is three, y is three t minus one. So we have three t minus three t, distribute that negative, negative one times negative one is positive one. Those reduce and we get a one. And that's the right-hand side of the differential equation. Left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So that means uh, y equals 3t minus 1 is a solution of the equation. Since it is a solution of the equation and it satisfies the initial conditions, um, then that is a solution to this uh, initial value problem. OK, so let's go back through the method briefly. So we should assume that y is of exponential order so that y of s goes to zero as s goes to infinity. And we start the same way we always do. We take the Laplace transform of the differential equation after introducing our notation. The Laplace transform of a derivative uses this rule. And then if you have t to some power times y or y prime or y double prime, you're going to use this one. So using this the Laplace transform of the nth derivative for n equals two, we get this for our Laplace transform of y double prime. And then for this piece, we say n equals one, just matching the pattern. So we'll have negative one to the first, which is that negative, times the first derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of the function that is there. So that's y prime. Now this tells me what I need to do from here. So it says compute y, the Laplace transform of y prime. We're gonna use that rule again, we get that. And then take the derivative using the product rule and we get that. And then once you simplify and you write the first order um, linear ODE in standard form, you have this. And then you say, okay, well, what's P of S? There it is. And you solve the first order linear differential equation for Y of S. And that took some work and we did it. And you got a little bit scary for a second if you look at that and you're like, oh no, I can't evaluate that antiderivative. You're right, you can't. Um, it doesn't have a closed form antiderivative, that e to the negative one half s squared. But if you use an integration by parts for this piece, then you end up with a negative one of those integrals plus a positive one of those integrals, and those two anti or those two um, undo each other, they're gone, they cancel out, and we end up with just this function on the right hand side plus c. Then we use the fact that y of t is of exponential order to say that this c must be zero. And once we have that, then it's enough to um, write our y of s in a form that we can take the inverse transform and then just actually take the inverse transform of it. And then if you're ever unsure, you can always just differentiate a couple times, substitute into the differential equation, differentiate once, substitute t equals zero, and make sure you get the right things there. See y prime of t is three, so y prime of zero is three. y of zero is just three times zero minus one, which is negative one, so it all checks out. Let me know if you have any questions about that.